All right, let's do this thing. I'm John Rettham with my review of WWE NXT, and I'm excited for TakeOver Stand Deliver so far because they've been building, you know, some of the big matches pretty goddamn well. So here's my theory to start off. I think Io Shirai versus Raquel Gonzalez will main event night one, and Balor versus Cross will main event night two. And even though there's only a couple weeks until that TakeOver happens, Two-night takeover because it's too big for one night. Like, WrestleMania 36 was too big for one night. Now, WrestleMania 37 is going to be two nights because it's back in business. And so many goddamn two-night events. God damn it, New Japan. What the hell did you do, uh, you know, having Wrestle Kingdom take place over two nights? Look what you've done. But anyway, Balor's in the ring, and he's talking about all the people that he ran over to retain his championship. You shouldn't channel Rebecca Gayhart shortly after Urban Legend and run somebody over. Don't do that, Balor. It's bad to do that. But in all seriousness, he beat his opponents, and now he's been waiting for Karrion Cross. He's excited to face him. And then Cross is here with Scarlet, and Cross is intimidating, but you know what? Really nice. Got to meet him at an indie show, and we settled our separate issues, he says. Now it's time to see who the real champion is. And then Balor says, you don't have what it takes to main event and beat me. And Cross comes back with, well, I'm going to choke the oxygen out of your body. And Balor says, you're going to be in the main event and you're going to choke. And you know what? Good. Good stuff back and forth. Then Scarlet talks in a stagey way. And she talks about how it's, you know, foreseen. She has foreseen what's going to happen. Is she going to make a magical tarot card monster? And is it going to be like all cinematic in the cards? Is it going to be like, um, is it going to be like a Paper Mario character? Hopefully not. And... She's talking. Scarlet is well spoken. This was a bit stagey, but it was what it was. And then Lorcan and Birch show up and they talk about, oh, you two guys and all this. Remember, you know, they're the NXT Tag Team Champions. Not that you would goddamn know that because they haven't defended their titles in a while. And whenever they have, the matches haven't really meant anything, which is a shame because Lorcan and Birch are really talented guys. But Scarlet says, hey, you guys aren't cowards. You're not cowards, huh? Huh? You're not cowards. I'm not touching you. I'm not touching you. You guys should face them tonight. Because what a better, what's a better way to, you know, build a feud more than to have two opponents possibly win the Tag Team Championships? They did that with Cena and Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 23. I hated it then, and I hated the prospect of it happening here. Fortunately, it didn't. Um, and so it's settled. They're going to have that match. We have Dexter Loomis versus Austin Theory. But we cut to Austin Theory backstage. He has new gear. And Candice and uh, Johnny Gargano are at home. So, okay, this is their only appearance. I'm all for that. No Indy Hartwell, though. More than the pity. And so I, I don't care about this feud, though. It's Theory versus Dexter Loomis. And I like Loomis. And Theory can wrestle well in the ring. And Loomis, is, I don't understand how he doesn't blink. It's very scary. Why doesn't he blink? How doesn't he blink? Um, But this is the feud that I... The work was good. In fact, the work in all the matches was good. But there are just some feuds I don't care about. And when you present stuff that's kind of bland or the uh, feuds that are just kind of there, I'm going to kind of zone out. Now, the match, again, well worked. Uh, we get, you know, some antics where, like, oh, Loomis, like, offers his hand. And Theory's like, I knew you I knew you wouldn't do that to me. I knew you wouldn't do that. Theory is, like, just so goddamn gullible. If you looked up gullible in the dictionary, you'd see a picture of his stupid face. And we get the silence, and Theory passes out. There you go. That's it right there. Mackenzie is outside Regal's office, and Ciampa shows up and says, Hey, Thatcher's not here. Imperium took him out, I think, even though I have no evidence of this. Ask Imperium if they've seen Alexander Wolf. I'm going to take them out one by one until there's one left. That's about it. And then Cole runs down O'Reilly. O O O O'Reilly Auto Parts. And he wants them out here. Here and now, Regal says that O'Reilly... Hurt himself again. He's going to, uh, you know, be out a little bit longer. Obviously, they're going to face off at TakeOver Stand and Deliver Night 1 or 2. I'm not really sure. And he says, well, you need to bring O'Reilly out here because I want to end this. And then O'Reilly shows up on the video screen. He hacks the system. He shocks the system and hacks the system. And basically says, you tried to end my career. 11 years of friendship. Da, da, I will end this one way or another. And I will stand and deliver this ending. So, um, I'm surprised they haven't shoehorned that title in a little bit more. So, Cole says that, well, O'Reilly says he's going to do this to me. Well, not if I do it to him first. Phrasing. An interview with Ember and Shotzi. They're the new NXT Women's Tag Team Championships because when in doubt, add more titles. That solves everything. I'm glad the women have something to do. But seriously, you couldn't have just had the titles go between all three brands. I mean, honestly, you could just, I, I think you could have just, Taken them, taken the original titles to NXT, and just kept them off of Raw and SmackDown. I don't even really think Raw and SmackDown need them, but I digress. Aaliyah and Jesse Kamea show up uh, with Robert Stone. Yes, they're still trying to make the Robert Stone brand happen. 
They want us to believe that Aaliyah is going to win a championship after being in NXT since the dinosaurs roamed the earth. That's adorable. Oh, your jacket sucks. Ooh, burn. Or your suit sucks. Whatever it is. This is high school drama shit. And then Devlin arrives. Great, because I needed to care less about the Cruiserweight Championship picture. Then we get Legoland Phantasm members, uh, Wild and Mendoza taking on Brizongo. Hooray! The tag division is a goddamn joke, and it's not that these guys can't work, but, the you know, Escobar's cronies are basically, they're good workers, but are we really given a reason to care about this stable? Brizongo, sorry, their tag title run didn't mean anything to me, and this match happened. It was, it was well worked. Escobar's there because he's putting over his guys. And high, low, pins, breeze. One, two, three. Escobar then talks up his guys again, and here's Devlin. He calls them stooges, because apparently he's going to turn them into a stew. And it's the real champ versus the fake champ. Real champ is Escobar. Fake champ is Devlin. You know, after all the speaking out stuff in the UK, especially in the UK wrestling scene, maybe having Devlin on your television isn't the best idea. I mean, sure, there are some people that have been absolved because it turned out to be stuff that wasn't true, but with Devlin, I don't know, just something just seems off about the guy. And also, he's not nearly interesting enough to put up with the trouble. I hope that Escobar beats him. I can't state enough how much I don't care about this feud. That being said, it will be well wrestled. And the cronies are outside, by the way, while Escobar is confronting him and talking to him and everything, and then Devlin... Hits him with that, like, that snap Saito suplex and then runs off while the cronies are like, oh shit, we need to go help our leader. We are really, really bad cronies. And then, yeah, I, I don't know, it was what it was. Cole will find O'Reilly and he's going to end him. I'm going to finish this. And we get, uh, Sare? Is that how you say her name? I actually don't know. I kind of zoned out of that because... They, they have another video package for a Japanese women's wrestler that if, if there are matches I need to check out of her, if I mispronounce it, I apologize. Please leave some match links in the comments so I can check her workout. She looked impressive from the clips I saw. She's wrestled in Cork and Hall and wrestled all over Japan. Please let me know if there are some matches I should check out. Um, then we get photoshopped stuff with Cameron Grimes on vacation. I hate this new Cameron Grimes character just because I don't find it interesting. I know it seems like I really hate NXT, and I actually don't. I just hate how watered down some of it is. Because the work, the matches were actually pretty damn good and served a purpose. Even if I didn't care about the feuds. Zoe Stark took on uh, Dakota Kai with Raquel Gonzalez. Well wrestled. They're trying to do something with Zoe, and this is good stuff. It went through a break. Dakota is a good worker. Of course, at one point they said Dakota just, you know, riding her opponent, dragging her down. Oh, do go on. And mounting and fisting her and everything. Man, I got fisting on the brain when it comes to the women's uh, matches lately. And then GTK, one, two, three. But Zoe Stark put up a good fight. And then here's Io Shirai with a contract. And she walks right by Dakota and hands her hands Raquel the contract and says, I want to face you. Okay, nice and simple. That match is going to deliver. Give them 20 minutes, they're going to kill it. So we then cut to Regal being ushered to find out what happened to Cole. Because something happened outside, you know, the Capitol Wrestling Center. Then the grizzled hung veterans are talking about MSK. I'm going to keep calling them that because it's funny, even though I have an immature sense of humor, whatever. And then Trumpa takes out uh, Fabian Eichner and then faces Marcel Bartel in a match that was fine. We have no evidence, by the way, that Thatcher was taken out. We just have Trumpa's word. Trumpa's hair, by the way, his hairline, and who am I to talk about, you know, bad hairlines. The fact he grew his hair out, he now looks like he's 54 instead of like 34, 35, whatever he is. He looks about 20 years older. Just cut the hair, Chompa, seriously. Willow's Bell, one, two, three. Not a bad match. And then here's Volta, whose grandparents were likely in Austria during the war. And then he he ends up, you know, seeing, like, what's going on here? I'm just going to stand here and all my cronies attacked. And then Chop, let me tell you right now, saw, uh, saw Walter live. His Chops on TV, it doesn't do justice for just how loud they are live. They are really loud live. And he just hits Chompa once. I mean, he hits him safely, but it still hurts. And then, you know, the guys beat him down, and we're going to get Walter versus Ciampa, likely at, I would imagine, on night one or two of TakeOver Stand Deliver. Again, Edward James almost should appear. So we then cut to Regal seeing Cole and O'Reilly being arrested for road rage. I, I understand what they were trying to do here. This didn't work for me. And I like the idea that they're trying to build this as a blood feud. Friends, you know, just fractured and everything, but... This is stupid, this is stagey, and the Christmas lights for the cops car, cop cars rather, made me dizzy. 
But I just, I didn't believe this. I mean, and I like what Colin and O'Reilly are trying to do, but this was really stagey and bad. Really bad. So we have L.A. Knight walking down the hallway talking about his upcoming debut, and Bronson Reed just walks by like, oh, huh, why is he walking into his locker room? We find out later. L.A. Knight takes on August Gray. Uh, Reed shows up a bit into the match with his jacket, rips the jacket, steps on it. That uh, causes enough of a distraction. August Gray hits him a bit, ends up missing the crossbody, and then I don't know what the hell it's called. It's like some kind of snap cutter. One, two, three, and L.A. Knight, the former Eli Drake, gets the victory. Good stuff. Certainly wasn't that bad. And then we get Dakota saying to uh, Raquel Gonzalez, I want a tag match. Uh, I want us to team up against Zoe Stark and Io Shirai next week. I need this. We need to remind people that we are the most dominant, you know, duo in NXT. She's like, okay, I can get down with that. And Zoe Stark will obviously take the pin. Um, unless they want to have Dakota take the pin and have, you know, a fracture with Raquel and Dakota. I think you wait till after Raquel wins the championship and then you fracture them. So... Siley then talks about the thousand-year-old woman not wanting to, not wanting, you know, any shenanigans, or she's tired, or she's stoned, or she likely has an ulcer. I don't know, I don't care about this, and I like Siley, and I hope she can make this character work, but this storyline is stupid. It is really stupid. A thousand-year-old woman that made a deal with a dragon that only cost her her soul. When's she gonna find the Dragon Balls? Anyway... Uh, we get Regal saying that if O'Reilly and Cole have the charges dropped against them, they will be here next week. This is stagey and it is not good for anybody involved. Cross and Balor with Scarlet versus Lorcan and Birch. Tag title match. Certainly not that bad. It was short, but it served its purpose. The titles didn't change hands and they built towards Cross and Balor a little bit more. Um... At least everyone in here can work. Uh, at one point, shotgun drop kits. Scarlet, uh, gets bumped by... I believe it was Lorcan. I think it was Lorcan. And she's down and everything. And then Cross repeatedly pounds and, you know, beats uh, Balor into submissions. So Cross is just beating him and beating him and beating him, just pounding him repeatedly. Let me tell you right now, when you got a big man pounding a little Irish man down, you pay attention, whether it's in wrestling or moving on. Lorcan gets an uppercut and pins Balor 1, 2, 3. So while I'm not a fan of the NXT champion getting pinned in a match, what else are they going to do? I mean, they had to do something. Balor taking the pin. Okay, Cross had beat him up, and he didn't have anything left. And then Cross beats him, or beats them down, you know, beats Lorcan and Birch down, and then beats down Balor and gets him for his finish, fisting him from behind. And when you get fisted from behind, you are going to go down instantly. Trust me. You know what? I'm just going to leave it at that. Not a bad episode of NXT. There were some things I didn't care about, but overall, certainly not that bad. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rutland. I'll see you soon.